So a gas turbine actually used in a stationary power plant has a compressor which takes and ingests outdoor air and it boosts the pressure and so the pressure at two is a factor times the pressure at one. It's greater than the pressure at one and often they specify the pressure ratio P2 divided by P1. Maybe that's nine. The pressure after the compressor is nine times the inlet pressure, P1. Or maybe it's 10, or maybe it's 11, or maybe it's 12, but it's a pressure ratio. That's a little bit of a tongue twister coming off of auto and diesel. What was our ratio? Compression ratio, a volume change. This is a pressure ratio. Pressure ratio versus compression ratio. So often the pressure ratio is specified for these. It then goes through, after the compressor, goes through the combustor. In the combustor, its fuel is added, and there's a fireball, and it's continuous flow through the compressor, through the combustor. The pressure change through the combustor is negligible, so often P3 is equal to P2. That's our assumption. In a real system, if you have flow through a duct or through a pipe or through something, there are real friction effects and there will be a pressure drop or pressure loss. But here, P2 is assumed to be equal to P3. No pressure loss through the combustor. Now, think about this for a minute. Uh, what about the temperature at 3 compared to the temperature at 2? It's much greater than the temperature at 2, okay? So temperature at 3 is much greater than the temperature at 2. Now, here's something. What about the volume occupied by one kilogram of air at two compared to the volume occupied by one kilogram of air at three? It's much greater at three, isn't it? The volume occupied by one kilogram of air at three is much greater. Why? Because it's spanking hot now. It comes out of the... Comp it's not a different pressure. It's a different temperature. So this is much greater too. So now you have a large volume, think about that, our large volumetric flow rate of hot gases and they're at high pressure and then they can really expand even more as it goes through the turbine and it drops the pressure. P4 is back to P1, it's back to atmospheric pressure. Now the specific volume at 4 is much greater than the specific volume at 3. It expands some more primarily because of the drop in pressure. But as it's expanding, it's pushing the blades of the turbine and it's doing work on the blades of the turbine and it produces power. So we have the work per unit mass out of the turbine. The compressor, there's a number of ways to write it. You can do this. You could put the work coming out of the compressor, and you know that this has to be a negative quantity because a compressor is not a work-producing device. That's staying with the sign convention, or sometimes you just abandon the sign convention. True? What about the combustor? That fuel is coming in, and it's burning. There's a large heat release. True? That's how you get much higher temperature coming out. Well, uh, what comes out at four is the nitrogen, which came in, which uh, the air comes in uh, around 20% oxygen and 80% uh, nitrogen. So it's still 80% of the nitrogen is coming out. All that nitrogen comes out, but the oxygen was mixed up with the carbon hydrogen fuel. Maybe it's methane, CH4. Is that methane? CH4? Yeah. So it'll come out as CO2 and H2O, and maybe just all of the oxygen was consumed in going into the CO2 and the H2O. So it'll come out as carbon dioxide and water vapor. Okay? but a lot of nitrogen still. Well, uh, this system is the way it really happens. There's some also some other enhancements to the basic gas turbine, but compressor, combustor, turbine, and 
what we want to do is we want to model it, so we will close the loop and we'll replace this complex changing of the fuel with the, with the uh, air, that combustion. We'll just replace that by a heat addition in a heat exchanger and then we'll just have clean air go all the way through and close the loop, come back around this way and have another heat exchanger. So the way we analyze these gas turbines is with an air standard Brayton cycle. So what's it mean? Is it's always air, it's never converted to carbon dioxide and water vapor. It always behaves as an ideal gas. Those three things you remember as an ideal gas. What's this first thing? Ideal gas equation. What's the second thing? Internal energy is a function of temperature only, which at first time you think, why well, isn't it a function of temperature and pressure like steam or ammonia, or refrigerant? It's an ideal gas. And then what's the third thing? The enthalpy is only a function of temperature. It's not a function of temperature and pressure. It's only a function of temperature. Okay. Now the combustion process is replaced by that heat transfer as I described from an external source. And the exhaust here and intake here were replaced by a heat transfer to an external source. Depends how you want to do it. You can put a couple things here. Um, you could put that as an in and you know it's going to be a negative in. Just like you put the work out of the compressor and you know that's going to be a negative out work. But a turbine is positive work out and this is a positive heat transfer in. Okay. So there you go. There are our states. State one is the traditional state going into the compressor. Often they specify the temperature at one and the pressure at one are given. Often those are given. Then they specify the pressure ratio, P2 over P1, is often given. So you can now calculate P2 is the product of the pressure ratio times P1. And also they specify the maximum temperature is often given, and that's T3. And often that's from metallurgical considerations. From a thermodynamic point of view, the higher the T3, the better it is. But uh, you have to pass really hot gases into the turbine, and the metal materials in the turbine, even if they're exotic materials, even ceramic or other things, still have to withstand those high temperatures and, and hold up in a harsh environment. Uh, so you specify the temperature, max temperature, the pressure ratio, the inlet temperature, and the inlet pressure, and then you can do a lot in the way of calculating the performance of this system. Let's sketch it out on a uh, PV diagram or Sketch it out also on a temperature entropy diagram. True? What does uh, the process from 1 to 2 look like? Um, if it's a compressor, air standard, we're going to have uh, the compressor's adiabatic, the compressor's reversible, so it's isentropic compression. So maybe that's in first from 1 to 2. Isentropic compression, one to two. Okay. What's that look like on a PV diagram? Usually the PV diagrams aren't as useful for the uh, Brayton cycle, but you could sketch it. Let's do. Let's finish out the TS. What about the process from two to three? What do you have? You have pressure is equal to a constant heat addition. True? And so it would be like this. Pressure is equal to a constant heat addition and then you get out to the max temperature at T3. Then you expand it through the turbine to 4 and then back again. True? Is that true? Alright. If you wanted to, 1 to 2 
to three, two, okay, now this is the challenge, one to two to three, where is state four? Where is state four? And one of the keys is to think about what's the difference in the pressure at one versus the pressure at four? They're equal. So where is state four? There's, there you go, there's state four. That was right, to the right of one. Okay, so there you go. Um, if you want to, we can emphasize that uh, this, this work um, from one to two is, is the work of the compressor. Um, two to three, you have heat in. Um, Q in that heat exchanger, Q in, um, lowercase q, uppercase q, whatever you want, Q in. Uh, what about three to four? You have the work of the turbine. So this is the work of the compressor going in. If you want to have them all positive, then this is the Q out. Depends how you want your sign conventions to be. So... If I take a look and say, okay, Q in, I do a first law. It's always nice to draw a little dashed line saying, hey, there's my CV, my control volume. I'm going to do a first law analysis around that heat exchanger to get a, an expression for lowercase Q in. What are the lower what are the units on lowercase Q in? Kilojoules per kilogram. So I'm talking about specific heat transfer. Okay. Um, you, I know that uh, you can start with the most general form of the first law, the rate of change of energy in the control volume with respect to time, the rate at which it's flowing in with the heat minus the rate at which it flows out across the boundary of the control volume with shaft power plus the mass flow rate and it brings in enthalpy. Here it's coming in enthalpy 2 going out enthalpy 3. And then it brings in its kinetic energy, 2, going out kinetic energy, 3, bringing in potential energy, 2, taking out potential energy, 3, close parenthesis, and you say negligible changes of kinetic, negligible changes of kinetic, steady state, uh, no, no uh, uh, shaft work going across the boundary of a heat exchanger, and we're left with lowercase q in, that's cap Q dot divided by M dot is equal to, look at that, H3 minus H2. True? So this is H3 minus H2. Let's do the same thing for the work out developed by this, by this <coughs> turbine. Is that going to be H3 minus H4? Okay. Here, now, because i dr drawn this out, I want to now abandon this and say I want to talk about a positive Q out. Okay, so a positive Q out. What is that equal to? Take it slow, draw the control volume, blah, 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 blah. But it's going to be H. Is that right? Good. Now, if I would have left the Q coming into that bottom heat exchanger, then I'm looking for a negative quantity. Switch them. All right. Now I'm going to do this, too. I'm going to let this one be a positive work into the compressor, because that's what I've shown right here on this sketch right here. And so the, the work uh, right here, I'm kind of writing the equation backwards. WC is H2 minus H1. Let me ask a question as you march around this thing. You just think of this. How about H2? Is H2 greater than H1? The enthalpy at state 2, is it greater than? It is. It is. I think if you get that straight. And then how about the enthalpy at 3? Is that greater than the enthalpy at 2? Yes, yes, yes. How about the enthalpy at 4 compared to the enthalpy at 3? It's less. It's less. It went down. And then you have heat rejection out of that heat exchanger. How about the enthalpy 1 compared to the enthalpy at 4? 
Which one's greater, one or four? Four is greater, so H1 is less than four, true? So if you get those relative magnitudes of the enthalpies, it helps you uh, not make an, a sign error. Okay.